Hey guys, so today I'm going to actually be showing you how to set up a development environment for Ruby on Rails on Ubuntu. Um, so before we actually start, we have to install, uh, we have to do a check um, to, just to check how, uh, how well updated our system is. So to do that, um, we have to type in uh, sudo uh, app get uh, update and then hyphen y is optional. So basically what this is going to do is going to run the uh, check to uh, make sure that all our software that we've installed in Ubuntu is up to date. So I'm not going to run um, because I already run this command once. So I'm just going to exit out. Um, so the next thing we need to do once we update check to see if our, our system has been updated is we actually do the upgrade. So if there's any uh, package that needs to be updated you know, by running this next command sudo apt get hyphen y upgrade it's actually going to run the upgrade process so let me actually explain to you what hyphen y means so basically as ubuntu is installing your software sometimes it's going to run into uh, a question where you know it's going to install some dependency um, basically by doing hyphen y you're just answering those questions by default by saying yes please install everything so i've already installed all the updates so for me it's going to be pretty quick um, for you, it might take a little bit longer, so maybe you know once you've done, then you can come back to the video. So the next command we're going to do is we're going to do uh, install some of the basic foundation tools um, that involves uh, curl, Git core, Python software properties, um, Vim, and lastly we have Build Essential. So these tools are the tools that uh, we need to use in order to you know install uh, you know the next set of softwares so basically these are kind of like the foundations so I've already installed it so it's not going to do anything new um, for you it might take longer as usual um, you know just let it finish and then come back to the video so the next step is uh, we are going to install RBNV RBNV is a Ruby version manager so it allows you to install and manage multiple versions of Ruby on your system so do a search for RBNV installer on your system on Google and then just go ahead and copy that pay, that uh, that link and paste it in the command and then just run it so basically what that's going to do is going to download and install RBNV for you so after you install RBNV the next uh, step would be to copy this existing uh, this block of text so just go ahead and highlight and copy So now we're going to actually use a, a, a Vim to edit our profile. So vi with the tilde slash dot bash rc. So you, it's going to open up this file. Um, go ahead and uh, press I to go into insert mode. Once you're in I, you'll see it, the word insert at the bottom of the screen. Um, once you've you're in insert mode you can paste the text that you copied from before so just go ahead and do control v or do a right click and paste uh, from your mouse so once that's done press escape and then press colon and then you'll see the colon at the bottom of the screen and type wq so basically wq means save and quit so w is to write and then q is to quit so you're going to write to the file and then you're going to save and then you're going to quit all right so now we need to reload our environment so to do that type dot tilde slash dot bash rc so once you run your bash rc you'll now be able to access rbenv so as you type rbenv this should show up if you if this shows up means rbenv is installed successfully all right, so before we can actually install uh, Ruby, we have to install uh, RBNV Bootstrap. So essentially, that's going to install a few tools that RBNV requires, uh, you know, to build Ruby. So just go ahead and type this command out: RBNV Bootstrap hyphen Ubuntu hyphen twelve hyphen zero four. So it's going to go ahead and download and install. So I'm not going to run that. I've run through it once already. Um, once you're done, you can come back to the video. So after Bootstrap runs, um, the next step is we can now we can actually install Ruby. 
So for example, if you want to see um, what versions of Ruby are available for us to install, go ahead and type rbenv space install space hyphen hyphen list. So what that's going to do is it's going to list out the versions of Ruby that are available. Um, so the version I'm going to use is 2.0.0p0. So to install that rbenv install 2.0.0 hyphen p0. So that's going to download and install uh, Ruby for us. So at this point, it might take a bit of time to install Ruby. Um, so at this point, it might be a good time for a coffee break. Uh, it usually takes about 15 to 20 minutes, depending on how fast your system is. All right, so on mine, uh, Ruby installation is complete. So now we need to set uh, what version of Ruby we would like to use. So if you actually type in Ruby hyphen V, um, you might get this uh, Ruby command not found um, because right now Ubuntu still doesn't know what version of Ruby it's supposed to use. So we have to teach it what version of Ruby I want to use. Since we already installed, so now all we have to do is rbenv space global space 2.0.0 hyphen p0. So what that's going to do is going to set the global Ruby version to 2. So the next time you type Ruby hyphen V, it should show up Ruby with the version number. So at this point, um, Ruby is uh, installed and we can now actually use uh, Ruby to develop the Ruby-based applications on our uh, on Ubuntu. Um, so Ubuntu essentially now understands the Ruby language. So if you want to actually play with Ruby, just go ahead and type IRB into the console and uh, go ahead and type like a one plus one you get, you know, the Ruby will then interpret that and output the result. So now we're going to install some of the foundation gems, uh, some basic gems that we would like to use. So gem install bundler. That's going to go ahead and install the bundler gem for us. So gems are essentially libraries. Um, you see, so it's very easy for us to just install any library and just call it in our application. So the next thing we need to install is gem install rails. So this is actually going to install rails for us. So it might take a while to install rails um, because gem is actually, rails is actually just a collection of many gems. So it might take a while for it to install. Um, so in the next section, we're going to take a look at setting up the database and the database that we're going to be using is called Postgres. Um, so Postgres is actually pretty nice. Um, it's a very reliable, performant database. Um, so we, we can actually even do a no SQL with uh, Postgres uh, as well as obviously the, the SQL stuff. So let's take a look at how we are going to uh, install Postgres. So we're not going to actually use the default um, Postgres version. So we're going to install the new version, which is version 9.2 point something. Uh, I think at this point it's uh, 9.2.4. So what we're going to do is going to add uh, uh, the Ubuntu, uh, new Postgres repository. So sudo add apt repository ppa colon uh, pitti slash postgresql. So it's going to ask you for your password. Go ahead and type that in. So basically now we're adding the repository for, uh, for Postgres. And then uh, once we call to install Postgres, it's actually going to install from that repository instead of installing the older version that comes with Ubuntu. So once that's done, um, go ahead and uh, install. So sudo apt-get hyphen y install postgresql hyphen 9.2. And libpq hyphen dev and Postgres QL hyphen contrib hyphen 9.2. So these three packages are going to set up Postgres for us uh, with all the tools that Rails is going to need, uh, you know, in order to connect with the database. So once Postgres is installed, the next step is we need to create a Postgres like a database user. So to do this, um, sudo hyphen u postgres psql so now once we log in uh, to our database uh, we can actually create a user 
So to do that, go ahead and type create user, um, the username, so that can be anything, it can be your name, with password, and then in the string. So you need to use a single quotes. Type in any uh, you know password you'd like. And don't forget the semicolon. So that's gonna create a user. So the next thing is we need to create, uh, make this user a super user. So this user will actually be able to create database. So Rails is actually going to use this user to control, you know, and manage the database. So alter user, your username, and then with super user. So basically it's going to turn our, the newly created user into a super user in the database. So now we can quit out of the Postgres console. So just do backslash Q. All right, so now uh, from the beginning, we've installed uh, all the foundation tools that we need in order to uh, work with Ruby. And then uh, we installed RBENV, and then we went ahead and installed uh, Ruby itself. And we installed some basic um, gems, Bundler and Rails. Then we set up the database and created a user in the database and made that user uh, a super user. So we ne actually need to install one more thing. Um, it's called Node.js. So Rails actually uses this tool uh, to do some stuff that we'll explain later on once uh, you, know, you start learning Rails. So to do that, go ahead and type in sudo add app repository ppa colon chris hyphen lea slash and node js so it's just like the postgres repository we're going to add this um, repository to our system so the next thing we need to do is we need to actually uh, do a install, so sudo app get. So actually we need to update our repository first because we added a few new repositories. All right, so once the update is done, now we can actually install. So sudo app get install node.js. And in this case, we can do that a hyphen by just to you know, tell Ubuntu to install everything. So now everything is installed and we're ready to actually build application with Rails. Um, so I'm actually gonna create a new directory in our home directory, so make mkdir repositories. So I usually you put everything that I work on in this folder, repositories folder. So to test if everything's installed correctly, go ahead and type Rails new and just type in the project name so in this case, we're going to be working with a, you know, whatever, like it could be a CMS. So in this case, easy CMS hyphen D, and we have to type in the name of the database we would, we would like to use, um, PostgreSQL. So if you get this error, it's because we haven't actually reloaded our Ruby environment. Um, so once we install a gem, we need to rehash our Ruby environment. So to do that, um, you can either close the terminal and open a new one, or you can do RBE and V rehash. So now Rails will actually work. So as you type Rails, you get that output, then it's working. So Rails new project name hyphen D PostgreSQL. What that's gonna do is it's gonna actually generate the Rails application for you. And it's gonna run bundle install to install all the gem that it needs. So all right, so next is we can actually start to build the application.